My name is Idris Brewster. I'm the executive director at Kinfolk Tech Foundation. Um, and we're here today to talk about the power of memory. <sighs> Growing up in Fort Greene, Brooklyn, I was lucky enough to really be surrounded by a really loving and connected community, mainly of individuals who looked like myself. I was surrounded by a beautifully resilient um, and strong history um, that existed within Fort Greene of the people who look like me and my ancestors who built this nation with their own two hands. I vividly remember being immersed growing up in the sounds of basketballs in the park, double dutch in the streets, um, hip hop on the stoops. But as time went on, as technology progressed, those sounds were start, are now replaced with the sounds of outdoor dining, with the sounds of luxury condos that are sticking out like sore thumbs. I can't afford to live where I live now, so I moved to Flatbush, Brooklyn, one of the bastions of cult, one of the last bastions of true NYC culture. Um, and within that, within Flatbush, a few blocks away from my house, there there are housing developments that are being built on top of the burial grounds of my enslaved ancestors. And this burial ground, the Flatbush Ancestral Burial Ground, isn't a nationally or citywide recognized area. And so it's pretty bleak when the history um, and our past are being erased for our progress and our future. And so as a black kid from Brooklyn, I really had to get used to and become accustomed to being in spaces and navigating spaces that weren't designed for me. Feeling like I had to constantly negotiate my identity and who I was. I went to a private school uh, in the Upper East Side from kindergarten to 12th grade. Same situation, I'm walking into spaces with people that didn't look like me, curriculums that weren't built with the knowledge and stories of my past. Again, constantly having to negotiate who I was. But at home, though, it was a different story. My parents were artists who understood and instilled in me the power um, and importance of knowing, having to understand and know where I came from. Our home was filled with stories, artwork, um, knowledge of revolutionaries, artists, technologists, thinkers, people who looked like me. People like Toussaint Louverture, the Haitian revolutionary, Maya Angelou, Zora Neale Hurston, the list goes on. I can remember, really, my parents at the dinner table teaching me about that history of myself, of my family, of my community. And this was not the history I was getting in those textbooks. This was a different kind of education, a, re a radical education. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, so if we trace the footprints of history, whether it's of in the US or globally, whether it's the triumphs of the Maroon societies in Jamaica and Haiti, or the brilliance and resilience of people like Denmark, Bessie, Ida B. Wells, or Marsha P. Johnson, we'd see countless stories of individuals, communities, cultures who are fighting against the odds, having to reimagine what is possible within their life and the future, and working tirelessly to make that happen. And so why are these stories going unnoticed, going erased? Why aren't they informing our collective consciousness and how we move forward? And so that's exactly the work that my organization, Kinfolk Tech, is looking to do. Through collective action, we can unearth the gaps in our history and mold new technologies to reimagine new futures. So in 2017, my love for video games as a child became my motivation to fight back against erasure. During the violence that happened in Charlottesville and the national reckonings that were happening in 2017 to uh, reckon with our, our memory, our monuments, when they were being forcibly taken down, we decided to do something a little bit different because I remember asking myself, what's going to replace these monuments being taken down? What are the imaginings, the desires of my community to see exhibited within our public spaces? And so in 2017, we started creating our own digital monuments now. That might be a tricky term, but we were, really, we were creating digital sculptures that could exist within these spaces. I remember building a prototype in 2017 and taking that anywhere that would have it, whether it's community centers, public demonstrations, um, galleries, museums. We wanted to show people that the future is tangible and that we can build it together. Inspired by Pokemon Go, we realized that we didn't have to wait for permission. We didn't have to, we didn't need the city or the government to have to validate our histories. We could do that on our own terms and display that on our own terms. Video game technology gave us the power to change the narrative. With augmented reality, 
we could place as many monuments as we wanted in the city without anyone telling us what to do. Did y'all know that uh, there's 48,178 monuments in our country? And out of that 48,178, less than 250 monuments are representing black and brown people. And so that's a microcosm of the issue, and that really exhibits the change that needs to happen. But doing that, it's not going to happen fast enough to build a million dollar monuments. How about the digital space can be a way to make that a reality? So technology, like augmented reality, provided us with the tools to take that erasure, that pain, that loss, and use it to fight back, fill in those gaps of history. Kinfolk wields this technology as a tool to bring together, not to divide, to overlay our world with erased stories of our ancestors, providing depth and context into the information and knowledge that has passed through these spaces. Imagine walking out in New York City and opening up your phone and being able to see 80-foot tall monuments um, of the people who walked that exact space. That's not, the, it, that's not the information you're really inundated with when you walk in these streets. And so Pokemon Go filled our cities with Pikachus and Charizards, Blastoise, the list goes on. So why can't we do that with our own stories? And so Kinfolk, is a, we build monuments. We build them together with community members, and it's turned into a digital archive uh, that's expanded from New York nationwide. But it's also a movement. The main message here with the work that we're doing is it's, it's about giving people agency to tell their own stories. It's about giving them the youth, the ability to divine our own legacies. I think a lot of times about my kid, myself as a kid in Brooklyn, not being able to see himself in the world around him, having to renegotiate and understand in my identity and affecting, how it affected my confidence. And so kinfolk is the path forward for me to make sure that the youth don't feel that way. And so these days, I'm often reminded of a beautiful quote from the brilliant Robin G. Kelly. Without new visions, we don't know what to build, only what to knock down. And so my work, my story, and us at Kinfolk, we're working to enable the collective vision necessary to create that equitable future, a vision that challenges us not only to cherish the stories of the past, but to create new ones. And so by freedom dreaming, by invoking our radical imagination, we can turn our cities into spaces that are defined and reimagined by those who inhabit it. Thank you. <laughs>